Hello, everyone. We are back again to cover major issues in Europe, Middle East, and Africa with Asia Pacific. Paul is still traveling for work in Thailand this week, and we will be covering off on Asia Pacific, who they will be leading with East Asia and Southeast Asia. Before we begin, I would like to wish all of our listeners a very happy new year. Over to you there. Thanks, Bargov. So uh, I'll just run through the East Asia Pacific region. So firstly, we covered 30 events today. Uh, if I'm jumping into Southeast Asia, uh, there were six explosions in Thailand's deep south province of Yala on December 31st. The Barisan Revolution National claimed the explosions and um, they targeted uh, mobile phone signal towers and power posts. Now, we recently did a briefing regarding uh, the Barisan Revolution National and the conflict in the deep south so you can contact us if you'd like some more insights also in thailand um the government has called on private companies and state agencies to implement work from home policies for at least two weeks uh this is because of the increasing caseload due to the Omri omicron variant of covid 19. if we go to indonesia um the national police chief said that uh, security forces had arrested approximately 370 terrorists across the country in 2021. Now, this is a 42% increase from the last year, and uh, most of the arrests have been members of Jema Islamia, which is apparently resurging. The government in Indonesia also banned coal exports in January uh, over concerns of low supplies at domestic power plants, and um, the ban is in place for a month. Meanwhile, labor unions are continuing to hold protests over the revisions to the minimum wage. There's a protest planned in Banten, West Java on January 5th. If we head over to Malaysia, uh, authorities have issued rain warnings for most of the country um, over the coming days. This comes after devastating floods uh, late last year. And uh, there's also, they also warned of flooding uh, due to coastal high tides in the coastal areas of Peninsular Malaysia. If we jump over to North Asia for a second, the government says that proof of vaccination is required for access to multi use facilities, and um, a thousand people have filed a lawsuit against this requirement. And just quickly touching over the Australasia and Pacific uh, region, uh, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology issued weather warnings for Cyclone Set. This is going to affect the coast along southeast Queensland, uh, Queensland and northern South, New South Wales. That's pretty much it for me, Bhargav, if you would like to tell us about South Asia a little bit. Thank you. The, in South Asia, there were 15 other developments and one issue was assessed today by our information team. Talking about India, the ruling Bharti Ajanta Party or the BJP will stage road uh, blockades across Delhi today against the new excise policy brought in by the Delhi government led by the Ahmadmi party. The tussle between the BJP and the Ahmadmi party has been going on for most of this decade now and uh, and it, it doesn't seem to stop anytime soon. Any policy which Ahmadmi Party champions or brings in as a as a major reform, BJP has opposed it, and the same goes to Ahmadmi Party. Most of the measures, most of the policies BJP uh, have brought in, Ahmadmi Party have opposed. So similarly, uh, this issue doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to be any different, and the excise policy seems to do mostly with the liquor shops. And this is unlikely to affect most businesses, but such disruptive measures or disruptive movements by political parties are likely to cause some amount of commotion in major areas in Delhi, uh, depending on how tight the security situation is. And there were calls for protests in Pakistan as well as in Sri Lanka. Pakistan, primarily jamaat e islamis women's wing is support, seems to be getting active. Uh, in Sindh province of the country, mainly uh, they're, they're primarily adding to the efforts by their uh, their male counterparts. Though Jamaat-e-Islami is known to be a fairly conservative organization, 
uh, time and again, they seem to portray uh, a more liberal picture to the outside world by uh, bringing in their women activists and showing that everybody is inclusive. But I guess, I guess we know the reality that they remain a conservative party. So with that, I would like to pass it on to Marcel to cover Middle East. Thank you, Bhargav. Uh, today in the EMEA region, we have over 34 developments. I'll cover some of the developments from the Middle East. Uh, in uh, Iran, uh, uh, clashes broke out in uh, the Baluch Baluchistan province, which is close to the Pakistani border between armed bandits and the IRGC. It was believed that the armed bandits was uh, were affiliated with a terrorist group that is affiliated with Al-Qaeda. Uh, at least three IRGC members uh, or para paramilitaries and five armed bandits were killed during the clashes. If we head over to Iraq, uh, thousands of people gathered in Baghdad yesterday to mark the second anniversary of the assassination of uh, the Iranian general Qasem uh, Soleimani. Uh, this, uh, the, uh, the general was assassinate, assassinated January 3, uh, 2020. Uh, also in Iraq, uh, several security officers were arrested over the death of 20 civilians during a security operation in uh, the Babel province. The security operation was launched uh, only to arrest two suspected militants in the village. Uh, in Israel, uh, uh, clashes between the Hamas militia and uh, the Israeli military forces continue. Uh, the Israeli military, military units targeted Hamas militia positions in the southern Gaza Strip. Uh, after uh, the Hamas militia launched two rockets uh, on the shores of Tel Aviv. If we head over to Turkey, at least 10 Kurdistan Workers' Party terrorists were killed by military forces at the border area with Iraq and Syria. In the UAE, uh, authorities uh, will ban unvaccinated citizens from traveling abroad starting January 10. Emirati citizens uh, who are fully vaccinated will also be required to have a booster shot to travel abroad. In Yemen, the war continues. At least 70 Houthi rebels were killed in, in airstrikes by the Saudi-led coalition on Marib uh, province yesterday, and at least six military vehicles were destroyed. This is from the Middle East. Uh, maybe we'll head over to Sitati to cover off Africa. Uh, thank you, Basil, um, uh, for that um, uh, welcome. Across Africa, we covered about uh, 13 uh, major incidents 13 incidents rather. And the major incident which our uh, information team was able to cover uh, came from Sudan, whereby the Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok resigned yesterday after a series of protests, uh, mostly against the argument uh, between the trans transitional government and the military, which was signed on November 21st, 2021. Um, additionally, uh, his uh, resignation uh, came after yesterday's demonstration, uh, whereby two people were killed in Omdurman city. Um, without forgetting that uh, we also had protests across uh, various uh, other cities in Sudan, including uh, the capital Khartoum, Bahri, Port Sudan, and Ad Damazin uh, cities. We expect that um, at least uh, there could be other major or further developments uh, or escalations of uh, uh, the latest developments in Sudan. So we advise our clients and other interested entities to keep a close watch on the latest uh, situation in Sudan. And also you can keep in touch with us for further uh, advice on the same. Uh, further across in um, Libya, we had um, the National Oil Corporation announcing the shutdown of the main oil pipeline linking oil fields in the eastern side of the country in Sama and Duhra. Uh, the closure of the pipeline is to facilitate uh, the regular maintenance. And it is expected that at least 200,000 barrels of oil will be affected or there will be less production of the same uh, for about a week. And then finally in Burkina Faso, at least 11 soldiers were injured and 29 Islamist militants were killed following an armed attack on security forces in Gomboro in Suru province. A series or rather, according to the security forces, a cache of weapons, several vehicles and communication equipment were recovered from 
the militants. I'll now I'll pass the baton over to Judy for other updates from Europe. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you. Um, just looking at Europe, I'm going to begin with a roundup of uh, COVID updates in several countries. In the Netherlands, um, thousands of people gathered at the Museum Square in Amsterdam yesterday to protest against the government's lockdown and vaccination policies. The protest was org um, organized by the Together for the Netherlands. At least four police officers were injured and 30 people were detained during clashes between, between protesters and security forces. In Spain, authorities have listed all Schengen and European Union countries except Switzerland as areas of high incidence in COVID-19 on the 31st. The, the Ministry of Health added that restrictions will remain effective until January 5th, 2022. In Italy, Lazio, Milan, Turing, and Sicily were cl classified as low-moderate risk yellow zones for COVID-19 today. Um, a list of cities are continuously being added and removed from um, a list maintained by the Ministry of Health to track the, um, the ongoing the impact of the ongoing variant. In Germany, COVID-19 restriction protesters vandalized offices of two German lawmakers in Cologne and Saxony yesterday. Pax targeted a member of the Social Democratic Party in Cologne and a member of the Christian Democrat Party in Saxony. And then, uh, other than COVID news, um, going to Belgium, at least four people were killed in a gas explosion in northern Belgium on December 31st. The explosion blew a hole in a four-story block, damaging 16 apartments. And then finally, in non-COVID news in Germany, at least 30 gravestones at a Muslim cemetery were va vandalized at Iserlohn City on January 1st. Authorities issued an appeal for information from witnesses. Um, the attack comes amid a rise in Islamophobic crimes across Germany. Uh, that's a roundup of all the news in, in Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. With that, we'll call it a day. Uh, I would like to leave our listeners with a few uh, a few updates on COVID-19, especially with the restrictions going up, especially in India. We see COVID-19 restrictions going up, tightening, in fact, in uh, in Rajasthan and some of the major cities, including Bombay, Delhi, uh, Bangalore, have increased their uh, their preparedness. Uh, Uday, uh, would you like to share with us your observations um, in Bombay? Well, I mean, restrictions are getting tightened, but right now it feels like it's just a matter of time before a large percentage of the population gets it. As of now, there's only been one major test a hospital or medical facility that tests for the Omicron virus. So as the testing increases, we'll see that, you know, the cases might be understated thus far. So yeah, it's looking a bit bleak at the moment, but here we are again. Great. Uh, thank you for that today. With that, we'll call it a day. Thank you.